Something we continue to cover here at WCCO is talking about forever chemicals known as PFAS, and we know they are a growing concern. Yeah, that's why the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency wants to get a better idea of just how pervasive they are around our environment. So I got to learn more this week about their newest way to track them. Minnesota may be the land of 10,000 lakes, but it's also home to 53 species of trees covering a third of the state. And scientists are looking to those trees, specifically conifers, to help tell a story. Pine needles have uh, like a waxy outer layer, a waxy cuticle that is really great uh, for attracting and folding chemicals in air. So it's like a great little passive air sampler. Unlike other costly technology, those needles naturally collect forever chemicals in the air. Understanding how the different PFAS move through the environment is very important for understanding exposure, connecting the dots from manufacturing and use into kind of the widespread presence in the environment. Summer Streets oversees the MBCA program. Along with nearly 200 volunteers, they're looking for 75 different types of PFAS across every single county. I think it's so important for the public to get engaged with um, the science, with the data, to understand kind of what's happening around them and to be part of getting that information, I think is really special. Hoping to answer where they're coming from, how easily they move, but also looking back in time with help from the Bell Museum. We'll eventually be going to the herbarium and selecting samples going back decades before PFAS were ever invented and then doing a kind of decade by decade look to see if we can pick up things like, um, when did we first start seeing PFAS in the air in Minnesota? The key is source reduction to stop adding more PFAS to the environment. And that's one of the reasons we're really so grateful uh, that the Minnesota legislature passed tomorrow's law, which uh, does put prohibitions on PFAS use and production in Minnesota. So fascinating. Oh, yes, right? I am blown away. I had no idea. So, yeah, she said in this round of collections, there are about 300 samples that they're just about done getting. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take about 45 to 60 days for them to get the results back from the lab. Then they need to analyze all that data. But eventually they're going to put out a, a big report uh, to just show how widespread these PFAS chemicals are in our air. We've done some studies on soil and, and water, water before. Right. And so this is gonna give us a, a whole new data set and kind of fill in some some gaps where we don't have a lot of information right okay. now. Okay, well, I look forward to you following up yeah, on that. Yeah, I'm, I I'm excited see that too. I mean, I, I hope there isn't many because we know they're yes, not good. Yes, we hope not but, many.